Hello everyone, my name is Marina Ray and this video is going to provide you with a high level overview of the safety technology trainee guide mod modules one, two and three. So module one ID is 75201 and that's the introduction to safety technology. Module two ID is 75 205, and that's the positive safety communication. And modules three ID is 75219, and that is all about the hazard recognition, environmental awareness, and occupational health. So, in um, this video, will be helpful for you whether you are a seasoned professional and you need just to refresh your knowledge and you are familiar with this book or this is something new for you and you're just uh, diving deeper into the contents and this will give you a brief overview. So module one, introduction to safety technology. This module describes the responsibilities of a safety technician and identifies the basic components of a safety program. It also provides an overview of regulatory requirements. So, the uh, safety technology has a few objectives. And when you have completed this module, you will be able to do the following. You'll be able to identify the roles and responsibilities of a safety technician. And you'll be able to describe the responsibilities and define important safety terms. And we are actually going to cover the most important trade terms as well in this video. Then. Number two, you will be able to identify incident causes and costs. And number three, you will be able to identify the basic components of a safety program, such as essential safety program policies and procedures and effective means and practices for providing safety orientation and training. And also you'll be able to identify regulatory requirements with which construction industry safety technicians need to be familiar, such as OSHA or Occupation Safety and Health Administration requirements, then EPA or Environmental Protection Agency requirements, then DOT or Department of Transportation requirements, and identify other relevant health and safety requirements. So let's jump right into that uh, module one. So the role of a safety technician on the construction site is an important one. The safety technician is responsible for conducting safety inspections, creating job safety plans, organizing and conducting safety trainings and investigating and maintaining records of incidents, injuries and illnesses. They are responsible for knowing how to prevent incidents and must understand the effects of incidents costs on a company. Safety technicians must make sure that workers carefully follow all the regulatory requirements that apply to the given work site. So, what we are going to see in section one are the roles and responsibilities of a safety technician. And the objective is to identify the role. So the most important trade terms that are covered in this particular chapter in um, section one are as follows. JSA or job safety analysis is a careful study of a job or task to find all of the associated hazards and identify methods of safeguarding workers against each hazard. Release of energy. Events or conditions that release energy from systems, machines, or pieces of equipment. Okay, so let's go to section number two, and that's all about incident causes and costs. And the objective is to identify incident causes and costs. So the trade terms that are used there is CURT or Construction Users Roundtable. 
and Kurt describes itself as an autono autonomous organization that provides a forum for the exchange of information, views, practices, and policies on various owners of the national level. Similar groups called local user councils function at the local level and seek to address problems of cost, quality, safety, and overall cost effectiveness in their respective areas. The next term is direct labor costs. Costs that can be directly related to an incident such as medical costs, workers' compensation insurance or workers' comp, benefits and liability and property damage insurance payments. The next one is EMR or experience modification rate. This is a numeric factor used in determining workers' compensation costs. It rises for contractors with poor incident experience and falls for those with good incident experience. Then gross income net income and profit are covered here as well. And you know that gross income is income before deductions or before taxes, net income is income after deductions or um, after taxes and expenses. And then the profit is the net income over a given period of time. Section three. Section three is related to basic components of a safety program. And the objective of this section is to identify the basic components of a safety program, such as identify essential safety program policies and procedures, and identify effective means and practices for providing safety orientation and training. So the regulatory requirements is section number four. And the objective is to identify regulatory requirements with which construction industry safety technicians need to be familiar, such as OSHA requirements, EPA requirements, DOT requirements, and other relevant health and safety requirements. And the most important trade terms are consensus standards. And those are the standards developed through the cooperation of all parties who have an interest in the use of the standard. For example, the National Electrical Code. Consensus standards rely on the expertise of manufacturers, inspectors, craft professionals, maintenance personnel, and safety professionals. The next term is CALM. And that is the coal refuse. Then there are um, such terms as GVWR or gross vehicle weight rating. And that's the maximum allowed gross vehicle weight for a vehicle. And then GUVW. And that's gross unloaded vehicle weight. And that's the weight of a liquid cargo trailer without liquids, also known as dry weight. Surface mines, mines in which the mining operation is done near the surface of the ground. Unwarrantable failures. An unwarrantable failure violation, second within 90 days, refers to a situation in which a mine operator knew or should have known that a violation existed and yet failed to take corrective action. And that concludes our module one. And we're moving to module two, which is all about the positive safety communication. So module two explains how to support an effective safety culture on the job site, including communication techniques, motivation, and responding to behavioral issues. So um, when you have completed this module, you'll be able to do the following. You'll be able to identify and describe the three key elements for supporting positive safety communication on the job site. 
such as identify the three types of communication and describe how to use them to communicate effectively with all employees on the job site. Describe the ARCS model of motivation, and we'll talk about that later. Describe how to respond to behavioral problems. And this section is all about communication and communicating effectively is the foundation for developing positive safety communication among all employees on a job site. The three types of communication are verbal, nonverbal, and written or visual. Safety technicians must understand how to utilize all three forms of communication in order to effectively interact with others. Communication with the site personnel is essential. If you're able to communicate with them, you'll be able to provide the recognition, motivation, and feedback they need to keep the workplace safe. You will also be able to motivate workers and modify employee behavior when needed. Establishing open communication is key. If you're able to speak honestly and respectfully to all workers at all times, even short conversations about safety, that will be meaningful and easy to understand. So section one covers supporting positive safety communication. And the objective of this section is to identify and describe the three key elements for supporting positive safety communication on the job site. So the performance task is to communicate safety policies and procedures to all employees on the job site. And there are a few trade terms such as ARCS model of motivation. And that is a strategy for motivating people developed by Dr. John Keller. The strategy states that to motivate individuals, you must A, gain their attention, make the, the issue R relevant to them, then help them to feel confident, which is C in this abbreviation, that they can be successful and then provide them with a sense of satisfaction, which is S, once they have achieved their goal. Then another term is behavioral based safety or BBS, a proactive method of safety management based on psychology. It requires systematic workplace observation, analysis of unsafe behaviors, and resolution of problems, coupled with training and incentives for behavioral mod uh, modification. Then communication. And we all know that that is a process by which information is exchanged between individuals through a common system of symbols, signs, or behavior. Diversity. Diversity is the differences between individuals, particularly with regard to race, religion, ethnicity, and gender. Ethnic groups. Ethnic groups is a large groups of people, classed according to common racial, national, tribal, religious, linguistic, or cultural origin or background. Feedback. Feedback is the communication that occurs after a message has been sent and received. This communication from the receiver enables the sender to determine whether or not the message was received accurately. Jargon. Jargon is a technical terminology known only by people who work directly with the technology being discussed. Nonverbal communication. This is the communication achieved through non spoken means, such as body language, facial expressions, hand gestures, and eye contact. Paraphrase. Paraphrase is a restatement of a text, passage, conversation, or work process that is explained without changing its meaning. 
people-based safety. And this is a safety management system centered on empowering the employee to make decisions both on their own safety and the safety of those around them, including giving all workers the authority to stop work in the event of unsafe conditions or behaviors. Verbal communication. Verbal communication is the transfer of information through spoken word. This process involves a sender, receiver, message, and feedback. Visual communication, and that is the communication through visual aids such as signs, postings, and hand signals. And then the written communication is the transfer of information through the written word. And that concludes our module two, and we're moving to module three. And Module three is about the hazard recognition, environmental awareness, and occupational health. So this module covers environmental and safety hazards. It explains how to evaluate risks and identify appropriate methods of hazard control. It also discusses environmental regulations for hazardous materials and describes the elements of a medical surveillance program. So the objectives of this module are as follows. When you have completed this module, you'll be able to do the following. You'll be able to identify hazards and unsafe conditions on the job site, such as types and energy sources, and you'll be able to describe effective hazard recognition techniques. Then you'll be able to explain how to evaluate and control hazards, assess risks using a written formula, identify the root cause, and select and use appropriate hazard control methods. Also, you'll be able to identify environmental concerns on the construction site, such as chemical specific safety programs. Then you'll be able to explain how to comply with the environmental laws and list environmental hazards and their control methods. So let us go to section one, which is job site hazards and unsafe conditions. So the objective of this section is to identify hazards and unsafe conditions on the job site. And there are a few terms that are covered here, such as uncontrolled release of energy. And that is energy that is released as a result of an energy source that is uncontrolled. Energy sources can include tools, equipment, machinery, temperature, pressure, gravity, or radiation. Section two. And section two is all about evaluating and controlling hazards. And the objective of this section is to explain how to evaluate and control hazards and you'll be able to assess the risks using the written formula, identify the root cause, and select the appropriate hazard control methods. A few trade terms here. Acceptable level of risk. The level of risk that is reasonable when working in hazardous conditions. Ambient noise level. Background noise that is related to the job done on the work site. Audible, when a noise or sound is heard or capable of being heard. Consequences, something that happens as a result of a set of conditions or actions. Cross training, cross training is training workers to do multiple jobs. Flaw, a part of the design of equipment parts or a process that relates that's cre that creates excuse me a hazard or operational or maintenance difficulties probability the chance that something will happen section 3 is all about the environmental concerns and the objective of the section is to be able to identify environmental concerns on the construction site. A few trade terms here. Asbestos. 
Asbestos is a natural mineral that forms long crystal fibers used in the past as a fire retardant. It is known carcinogen. Asbestos containing materials or ACM, an object that is comprised of asbestos and other compounds. Asbestosis, scarring of the lung tissue caused by inhaled asbestos fibers that lodge in the lungs air sacs. This terminal condition is caused by asbestos exposure. Baseline. Baseline in medical surveillance programs. This refers to the initial health status of the person. Subsequent medical reports are compared to the baseline. Bioaccumulate. And that is the natural process by which chemicals become concentrated in higher levels um, of the food chain as larger animals consume many smaller contaminated animals or plants. Dielectrics, non-conductors of electricity, especially substances with electrical conductivity of less than one millionth of a Siemens. Generators, those are the firms that create hazardous waste. And the hazardous waste is another term, and that is a discarded material that has dangerous properties. It may be ignitable, corrosive, toxic, and or reactive. Hazardous waste manifest. A manifest is similar to a bill of land, uh, lading. It is a shipping document that must be used for shipping waste that is considered hazardous by DOT and EPA standards. Light ballasts. The part of fluorescent lights that contain electric capacitors, which may contain PCBs. Mesothelioma, an aggressive and terminal form of cancer that typically develops in the outer lining of the lungs. It is almost exclusively caused by exposure to asbestos. PCB or polychlorinated biphenyls, a group of man-made chemicals which were widely used as dielectric fluids or additives. PRP or potentially responsible party, and that is an individual or firm who may be liable for paying costs or for Superfund cleanup, a defendant in a Superfund lawsuit. RQ, reportable quantity. The amount of a chemical that when spilled must be reported to the National Response Center. Secondary contaminant. A barrier that collects chemical overflow or spills from their original containers. Silica, a common mineral often referred to as quartz. It is present in soil, sand, granite, and other types of rocks. Silicosis, a form of lung disease caused by inhaling crystalline silica dust. Stormwater runoff, rain that is not absorbed by the soil. Uncontrolled rainwater flows over land and picks up dirt and other contaminants and carries them to the nearest water body. Superfund, the common name for the comprehensive environmental response, compensation and liability act. Swales, shallow, Trough-like depressions that carry water mainly during rainstorms or snow melts. Target organ, a specific organ in the human body most affected by a particular chemical. Wetlands, lowland areas such as marshes or swamps, which are saturated with moisture, especially when regarded 
as the natural habitat of wildlife. And that concludes our module three. And that was the overview of the first three models of the safety technology trainee guide. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.